is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are LA. The All-Star break is over and the regular season resumes as we are back here at the Big A and the Chicago White Sox are in town as we kick off a six-game homestand. It is 70s weekend tonight. White Sox kicking off game one of this three-game set. We welcome you inside the Big A and back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Gubiza. I'm Victor Rojas and uh, the one thing that we know for sure after coming out of this All-Star break is the fact that Mike Trout once again performing at the highest level a terrific terrific performance yet again. Well I mean what he does consistently in the big moments is unbelievable and an all star game even talking to him before he went down to that game in San Diego he just felt comfortable you just know he's going to perform and take a look at our Carl's Cam replay as usual Mike Trout under control perfect swing tried the quick pitch of Cueto did he stayed back with that short compact swing line drive back up the middle once again so Mike Trout in the big moments always seems to come through and his numbers when you look at it in the all star game 462 batting average that's six for 13 he's hit for the cycle double couple doubles triple home run and a singular MVP in 14 and 15 missed out this year Eric Hosmer got the MVP but still show why he is the best player in all the baseball getting to hit that first at bat. I mentioned the White Sox are in town second time these two teams have met this year the Angels and the Sox split a four game series back in April. It's a uh, really a tale of two different teams because in April they were world beaters right now they're just struggling for the wild card. Yeah, remember Victor early in the season they were pitching extremely well and they were defending very well then all of a sudden the pitching went in the tank a little bit and all of a sudden the offense came about. But when you look at where they're at in that wild card this four and a half games back they're tied with Kansas City a team they have struggled with they played a number of games with it. they are going to play some teams over this next stretch in which you got Seattle involved in there you got Detroit. That's what it's going to come down to. It's starting to hit a little bit better. They will pitch well. Chris Sale, one of the best pitchers in all the baseball, leading the staff, and they catch the ball very, very well. Well, one guy who's thrown the ball well in the month of July is Hector Santiago. He's on the mound tonight for the Angels. Famey facing his former teammates. We're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A. Sit back and relax. We're going to bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return. This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. By Jack in the Box, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack is back. Taste it before it's gone. By your Southern California Toyota dealers. By Mercury Insurance, on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by the Jeep Renegade. Find your inner Renegade and reach your highest potential with an EPA estimated 31 highway miles per gallon.
Funky night here at the Big A as we kick off 70s weekend. As you can see, the Angels wearing their uh, retro uniforms. And uh, to me, one of my favorite uniforms that the Angels have sported throughout their franchise history. Oh, especially those little days, belts or whatever, no belts or sands about looking belts. Beautiful colors right there. <laughs> Whatever looking belts. Yes. Yeah, Sansa belt is always a good look. <laughs> got the drawstring just inside the uh, the two buttons as well. Yes, it's, indeed. It's always a good look. Yes, it is. Hector's taking them out, so we will take a look at Robin Ventura's starting lineup for the Chicago White Sox. They rolled into town playing in their 89th ball game with a 45 and 43 record, seven back in the Central, as we just pointed out, just four and a half back in the American League wild card. Leading things off, Tim Anderson, former first round pick. He is the shortstop. Adam Eaton is in right field. Jose Abreu at first base. Melky Cabrera, the cleanup hitter in left field. Todd Frazier, the all-star at third base. Brett Laurie at second. Down to Navarro is behind the plate. Obviously, El Garcia at the DH. And the former angel, J.B. Shuck, is batting ninth, and he will patrol center field. We mentioned Hector Santiago throw the ball well in the month of July. This will be his 19th start of the season. Comes into tonight, Gooby, with a 6-4 and four mark. A 4.58 ERA. Yeah, I really like what I've seen from his last two starts in which he's covered 13 innings. It's one earned run during that stretch for Hector. He's been very consistent as far as at least working quickly, establishing his fastball, and then finishing off hitters with his changeup and slider. But my go to is for Hector to be successful consistent follow through. That's the thing with Hector, is that sometimes he gets a little quick, then he has to. Recoil and off speed is important against this White Sox team. They will gear for the fastball, show the fastball, get him out with off speed. Take a look at the Angels defense tonight. Behind Hector Santiago, Daniel Nobbitt in left field, Mike Trout at center, Cole Calhoun at right, UNL Escobar and Angelton Simmons on the left side of the infield, Johnny Giovatel and G-Man Choi on the right side, Giovanni Soto behind the dish. And Mike Trout, the all-star out in center field with five assists so far this season. 993 fielding percentage since 2014, with his third best amongst all center fielders in Major League Baseball. Covering a lot of ground, but his throwing arm has gotten better and better each year. Last couple of them. Halo's five and five of the month of July, and the first one tonight is in there for a strike. Anderson playing in his 29th ball game, 304 batting average, four home runs, 10 runs batted in. He will look at strike two. 17th overall selection in 2013. Different looking White Sox team than what we saw back in April. Jimmy Rollins was on that team. He no longer is as Anderson goes down swinging for the first down. Well, I like that fastball command early on and challenge on an 0-2 pitch for Hector. And the Hyundai key for this game for the Angels to be successful. Oh, Abba. We are in that groovy 70s time. Knowing me, knowing you. The key, when you think about it, both these pitchers have pitched for this or their other organizations, so they know them a little bit, their tendencies. The important thing for hitters is recognizing that. For Hector, recognizing they will chase fastballs out of the zone like he got there. Eaton fouls this one back. A right fielder, 271, now 27 years of age. Santiago and Eaton, part of the uh, three-team deal that kind of saw them change uniforms. Eaton going from Arizona to the White Sox, Hector coming over to the Angels, and so on. No balls and two strikes now. Asking the home plate umpire where that location was. Pretty good spot. Good enough to be called a strike. Jim Reynolds behind the plate tonight. Manny Gonzalez at first. C.B. Buckner at second field. And Colbreth, the crew chief at third. Breaking ball. It's one ball, two strikes. I like what Soto showed him right there. I'm there to block that pitch in the dirt. You're ahead of the count. Expand the zone. I will keep that baseball in front of me. And that's exactly what Soto was able to do on that hard cut fastball in the dirt from Hector. It's very important as a pitcher knowing that your catcher can block that hard break ball in the dirt when you're ahead of the count. Thought about pulling the trigger. Soto wants an assist. Colbert does not oblige. And it's two balls, two strikes. Beautiful night for baseball. 77 degrees at first pitch. Not a cloud in the sky. Anderson striking out to start the game. And now Eaton with a full count with one out. Jose Abreu on deck. White Sox and even 500 ball club. Out on the road this year, 21 and 21, and of course the Angels struggles at home. Well documented, 10 games under 500. This one slapped to left. Nava moving back. That ball's going to get over his head. Unable to get to it. 
Off the bat, it seemed like a routine fly ball to left field, but it just gets over the head of Nava for a double. And that's the 41st opposite field hit for Eaton this season. Coming into that game, he had 40, which is third most in Major League Baseball. Again, going away, and that plays right into his swing. And then that step back by Nava, and then over his head. The carry we're seeing, warm day today. One hops that wall for a double for Eaton now, his 14th double of the season. So man in scoring position for Chicago and Abreu, the first baseman coming up. Abreu hey. hitting 272 with 11 home runs and 52 runs batted in. It's a Sox ball club that uh, still trying to tinker with its lineup. 13th in average, 13th in home runs, 12th in runs scored. Eat with good speed over at second. One ball, one strike. And he likes to try to steal third base, too, so you got to bury your look back to second. Don't be surprised if Gia Batella sneaks in behind Eaton right here for a potential pickoff. There's Robin Ventura. Some have said that his name has popped up as far as being on the quote unquote hot seat. Especially after the uh, terrific start that they had the month of April, 17 and 8 with a 2.72 staff ERA. Had him leaning there. Perfect case of a, a base runner trying to time yeah. the pitcher and his looks. As Ricky Henderson has told a number of people, the easiest base to steal for a base dealer, third base. One reason, ball, two strikes. Reason why a lot of times pitchers just don't pay attention to you. They'll have that look once back to you, and then they'll look at home and get the sign and then go and throw the baseball. One out double for Eaton. Down goes Abreu, two away. Stayed away from him as well. And the guy that likes to hit the fastball, he got a couple fastballs by him in that sequence. And a great located fastball here at 92 for Hector. Again, when he hides the baseball well, that means staying in his mechanics and not flying open. It's a very deceptive fastball. You see that shoulder tucked in, and then the fastball's on you that quickly and by you, even with a good fastball hitter like Jose Abreu. Now, can you take this four-day All-Star break and say the pitchers have a little bit of an advantage after hitters get the chance to just hang out for a little bit? Absolutely, no doubt, no doubt. Hitting's all about timing, and their timing is off at this particular moment, especially for the guys that didn't play in the All-Star game. Right. So they kept their swings going, but the other hitters, even though you'll have batting practice yesterday, it's, it's completely different hitting off a coach as compared to hitting off a guy throwing 92 93 against you and a perfect example of Bray you looked like he had some hittable fastballs and he was late on them. and he generally doesn't miss fastballs Malky takes a strike to even the counted one and one and you got another really good fastball hitter in Cabrera here too so this be interesting to see about his timing another solid season for Melky 297 eight home runs 41 RBIs has 18 doubles Three triples as well for the switch hitting outfielder. Fouls this one back one and two. And to your point, bigger guys like Adam Eaton, they're guys that are just trying to put the ball in place. So they're just all about contact, not guys with their long power swings like an Abreu, like a Cabrera, like a Todd Frazier on deck. Those guys, it takes a little bit of time to get their timing and rhythm back at the plate. Now Simmons moving over, trying to keep uh, Eaton close to the bag. 14th double for Eaton. His 500th career hit. 1 2. Down goes Cabrera. Three strikeouts in the first. And that one out double stranded in scoring position. Went to the bottom of the first scoreless.
bottom of the first inning. Let's check out Mike Sosha's lineup for the Angels. Game number 90 of the season, 37 and 52. It's Junel Escobar leading things off at third. Cole Calhoun in right field. Mike Trout, the All Star in center. Albert Pools at DH. Daniel Nava, the five spot with CJ Crone, the disabled list. He's in left field. Johnny Givatel at second. G Man Choi at first. Giovanni Soto behind the plate. And Andrelton Simmons, proud owner of a 12 game hitting streak. Fan Ignite, the deal play shortstop. They're taking on a 32 year old right hander, born in Guadalajara, Mexico, but raised in the San Fernando Valley. Yes. Former Angel, Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez, fastball is going to be 89 93. Throws a slider, curveball, and a very good split finger fastball. My go to is to be successful against him is elevate that split and don't alternate that swing pass, especially when he tries to elevate a fastball upstairs. Keep in line with that and use the entire field against Miguel Gonzalez. First one from Gonzalez lifted foul and out of play and it's an 0 one count on you know. 317 batting average for Escobar that's eighth best in the American League. 21 doubles three home runs. 27 runs batted in. You see the on base percentage of 365. This one out toward right field. He, a little bit of a late start. It's that carry with the uh, the warm night. There's the first down. We check out the uh, White Sox defensively. It's Cabrera, Shuck, and Eaton in the outfield. Frazier, Anderson, Laurie, and Abreu from third to first. Navarro behind the plate. And Brett Laurie's done a pretty good job. Not of late as far as errors made his last 16 starts, five of them, nine on the season, but only had one in his previous 47 start. He's has made some unbelievable plays with good range, and we know how strong that throwing arm is. For Brett Laurie at second base. Cole Calhoun, the right fielder at the plate. Cutting through the first one. It's an 0-1 count. Cole in the midst of a career best 10 game hitting streak. 288 is his batting average on the season. Cole let a I guess you could say average wise a down month of June at 269, but he's turned it back up in July, hitting 289 through nine games. Good to start the uh, post All Star break schedule at home. Six games between the White Sox and the Rangers. This one's fouled off. Let's go back a flashback to our ATT high speed replay, August. Ninth of last year against Miguel Gonzalez when he's a pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles. Home run by Cole. This one for six in his career, but that one being that big fly for Cole Calhoun against Gonzalez last year. Called strike three on the outside part of the play. Just got the outside corner. Two down. With Mike Trout coming to Blake, a little ovation for his All Star performance. Let's take a look at it. in the driver's seat, which is brought to you by Kia with Mike Trout at the plate. What he has done, certainly in that big All Star classic, as far as hits all time on the Angels list, six of them. Rod Carew right behind him at five, and Wagner with five, GA, Vlad, and Jim Bogosi all with three in the All Star game. Trout at the top, six for 13 in the All Star game. When you think about it, none of those games have been that tough time of day, too, dealing with the sun and the shadows, yet he's still able to crush the baseball in the big moments. Fouled off, and the game still counts, apparently. Yes, it does. American League with the uh, home field advantage. Pretty solid, pretty solid game, too. It felt more like an exhibition, though. The way the pitchers were used just seemed like uh, the traditional, which is what it should be. Unless, Always has unless been. you're Johnny Cueto going out for that second inning. Yeah. Didn't work quite as well for him. Off the plate. One ball, two strikes. Trout's batting average of 322. That's fourth best in the American League. Altuve leading the way with a 341 batting average. Off the plate, two and two. 70s weekend, and of course on the uh, video boards and scoreboards here, they 
superimposing players' faces with uh, some stylish designs and hairstyles. And some real good ones to boot. Yeah. Full count. Something different. Yeah. Superman the movie. And he is Superman. Even the music. Yes. Get a music bet for that. Payoff pitch. Slowly hit to short. That's Anderson. The one, two, three inning for Gonzalez. We'll head to the second with no score. And now it's time for Lowe's home field advantage. The Angels with major home field advantage against the White Sox in the last nine meetings. Eight and one mark, 10 home runs, batting average over 300 with runners in scoring position, and a solid ERA of 3.21. Reason why, eight and one last nine. When Mike Sosha would just love to see this team get a little bit more consistent. As far as the pitching, the defense, and the offense on a roll here to get it going in the second half. And the offense through nine games a month of July, or probably ten games a month of July, 302 batting average. Swing the bats well. 0 2 to Frazier. Foul back. Frazier, Laurie, and uh, Navarro here in the second for the White Sox. Died in his first season with the Sox, hitting 213. Second home runs with 25. He's behind Trumbo. 57 runs batted in. One ball, two strikes. Interesting. You're trying to stay in with fastballs against Todd Frazier. Batting average against him on fastballs here. 233 batting average versus the fastball this season, which is fourth worst in Major League Baseball. And when you think about how many home runs he's hit, majority of them have been on all speed pitches. Going the other way to boot. And you're seeing a lot of fastballs by him. That one out over the plate, trying to stay in. If you go fastball up and in, very, very effective. Up and away, he's got amazing power the other way. We saw him in a home run at the U.S. Cellular Field going the other way against the Angels earlier this year. Two balls, two strikes. You know, they talk about Rockies players and the home and road splits and how the uh, the home are always going to it seems like the home are always going to be outweighing the road. But if you look at Frazier splits last year same thing in Cincinnati which is a uh, offensive minded ballpark. Takes down it in. I only say that just because of the struggles he's had in the shift to the American League this year but he had 278 at home last year 233 out on the road. Powers there. And you transition to a new league. You go see new pitchers all the time. 
Yeah, his home run to bat, bat ratio, one of the best in baseball. 12.76 at bats per home run ratio, which is second best in all of baseball. So when he makes contact, it's going a long way. But he does have that swing and miss in him. And that's what Hector's trying to do, especially with a fastball up and in. 3 2, lifted foul. This will land in the seats. Well, you never know with Simmons, it could go like 10 rows up and somehow he'll pop out of a seat and make the play. That play he made in Baltimore with the infield in going back and over 100 feet to make a play. Infield in, runners at second and third going back. Statcast had him going back on that baseball at 18.7 miles per hour to cover that much ground right over the shoulder catch. And his 70s weekend, so he, he could essentially be the rubber band man yeah. this weekend. <laughs> oh, no. That's a called strike three. Got him on an off-speed pitch on the inside part of the plate. Fourth strikeout already for Hector Santiago. After a number of fastballs, went off-speed and freezes them at 86. See the frustration. Normally, if you're a hitter, you're looking off-speed, you're going to get that pitch. But after all those fastballs, good decision for Hector to go off-speed. Ten pitch at bat too. Here's Brett Laurie, second baseman. Take down it in. 257 average for the second baseman. 11 home runs, 35 runs batted in. Also with 22 doubles. Good tempo for Santiago tonight, at least to start. And yeah, we talked about this White Sox club in our opening about what they have to do to stay in contention for the wild card. We talked about Seattle then playing Detroit, then they play the Cubs in a home and home two game series apiece. So they've got a tough stretch themselves from a Ventura's club. They've pitched well, they've caught the baseball very well, but the batting average down towards the bottom and run scored down towards the bottom offensively. Robin in his fifth season as the skipper. Laurie went around. No help needed from Manny Gonzalez. Looks good though. Yep. <laughs> He's ready to roll. Two balls, two strikes. Four punch outs for Santiago. One hit. That was the one out double by Adam E. Popped him up. The conventional one, he didn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the old rainmaker pop up. Two down. Hey, every fan matters when the Angels take on the Rangers on Wednesday at 7.05. Fans in attendance will receive a Mike Trout pocket t shirt. Courtesy of Old Dominion Household Services. While supplies last, visit angels.com slash promotions to get your tickets today. See, that would have been perfect for 70s week because you could hide your smokes in there if you were into that kind of thing back in the day. Possibly. I can't do I'm looking forward to wearing that on that next road trip though. That'll be a good look for us. Yeah, oh yeah. Houston, Kansas City. It'll be slightly balmy there. Yes. Down to tomorrow. Switch hitting catcher. 208. Nine doubles, two triples. Five home runs. Foul back and out of play. Second time the Santiago's face the White Sox. He beat them on April 18th with seven innings. Ten strikeouts in that game. See, it's Navarro out in front. Cal remains at one or two. Overall, very solid ERA in his career versus the White Sox is one and one with a 2.19 for Hector versus his former teammates. Down goes Navarro. Strikeout number five for Santiago and a one, two, three sack. The one to the bottom of the inning, scoreless.
off the bat clean and crisp for his life. About the best winning percentage in the American League since 2000. The Yankees at 594, Oakland 558, and the Angels at 543, and the Red Sox is behind at 521. So the Angels have played consistently better in the second half since 2000. Tonight's the night to get it started, get the offense rolling here in this inning against Gonzalez. We say 2000 because that was uh, Mike Sosha's first season at the helm. Seems like only yesterday. Yes. Here's Albert Pujols lead things off in the second with no score. Miguel Gonzalez had himself a 1 2 3 first, including a strikeout of Calhoun. Albert at 249, 15 home runs, 60 runs batted in. Three infielders on the left side, and he fouls this one off to the right, until it's 2. And Gonzalez with very good career numbers against his former teammates, also 3 and 1 with an ERA 2.97. The Michigan Junior College in the San Fernando Valley. Signed by the Angels as a non drafted free agent in 2004. Ended up getting to the big leagues with the Baltimore Orioles. Pitched three games before making his first big league start. And that was right here at the Big A on July 6th, 2012. Albert bounces it foul. Still remember that one vividly. He wore the glove that Nick Aidenhart had in honor of his good friend and teammate. Still has the glove, doesn't use it anymore, but used that particular game and pitched very well that day. Seven innings, gave up three hits, one run. This one out toward right center field. Eaton comes in. He'll make the catch. One away. Eaton's made a pretty good transition. Generally, a center fielder moved over to right field. It's 13 assists this year in the outfield. The guy that generally plays a very shallow right field, very comfortable going back on the baseball. Daniel Nava to play the left fielder 250 average with three doubles a home run at 10 RBIs. He will take inside for ball one. Two balls no strikes. Gonzalez last year. With the Orioles, 26 starts, 9 and 12 record, a 4.91 ERA. He was in spring training with them once again. They released him on April the 1st. The White Sox scooped him up, signed him on April the 6th. He pitched down at AAA. Ended up making four starts for Charlotte, 1 0 with a 2.65 ERA, and now making his 14th appearance, 13th start for the Sox this year. Three and one. That's a good look right there. Hey man, just feel the groove, dude. Yeah, that's some great glasses. Fantastic hair. Peace, man. <laughs> Fell back, full count. He had a pretty groovy road trip, as a matter of fact, also. He's oh. a six for 15. Moving like a slinky oh, out in yeah. left field. Oh, yeah. Four RBI. <laughs> Full count. This one's popped up third base shot headed toward the seats. Good crowd tonight. First game back after the break. A lot of White Sox fans in attendance. Got the old school Sox jerseys going on. The fans do anyway, not the uh, the players. Yeah, a lot of people pretty excited about this whole weekend. Saw a number of them out there. We're out there in the pregame show, ready. 70s, groovy 70s weekend. Is there any other kind? That missed low. 
First base run of the ball game for the Angels comes with one out here the second via the walk. And here's Johnny Giovatella. So Johnny fits the bill. He looks like a little Marty Barrett. <laughs> Why you bring that name up? You know it's not one of my favorite. 268 batting average for Johnny. He'll look at a strike. Oh, there he is. <laughs> We're getting <to> Star Wars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know you were grooving to that stuff in your Trans Am in high school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did have it, two of them, as a matter of fact, for, uh, for a period of time. The red one and black one. Nice, Anderson. To Laurie, to Abreu, inning ending double play. And we are 3-2 here at the Big A, still scoreless. The top of the third inning. Don't miss MLB on FS1 tomorrow, 12:30 Pacific. David Ortiz and the Red Sox taking on the Yankees. Then on Fox at four, Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers take on the defending world champions in Kansas City. MLB on FS1 at Fox, or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. It's funny, Mike Trout's take on David Ortiz. He's not retired. He's not retired. Consider all the numbers he's put up in the first half. As the Red Sox pick up Drew Pomerantz from San Diego to help their team out. Garcia swinging a miss to start off this third inning. As far as uh, David Ortiz is concerned, in the immortal words of Hawk Harrelson, who's sitting immediately to your right, he gone after this year. <laughs> he grabbing some pie. <laughs> Garcia behind <laughs> the count at 0 2. It's never a bad time to reference the Hawk. No. Five strikeouts for Hector Santiago, one hit allowed. Eight, nine, and one here to third. Garcia fouls this one back. Garcia hitting 232, with five home runs, and 28 runs batted. 402 counts already in this game for Hector, which is a good sign for him being aggressive, getting ahead of the count. This one's punched to right field. Is it going to hang up for Cole? It does. That was well struck by Garcia, and that's the only reason that Cole's able to make that catch. That ball was hit so hard, and it stayed up long enough for Cole to run in on that baseball, but it was well hit. Pretty good indication how strong Garcia is, but still a quick out for Hector. Pitch out over the plate, lined right at Cole, comes in a few steps, and runs that one down. As easy as that looks, that's one of those that 
You take your eye off of right off your wrist. Yeah, any slight hesitation, that ball, if it gets to the ground, is getting by. It was hit that hard. It would skip on that outfield grass. There's J.B. Shuck. Center fielder tonight, batting ninth, hitting 254 on the season. Three home runs, 12 RBIs. Still remember that play he made into the left field stands and the short wall down the line as an angel. Is that Jose Bautista? Did I get the Blue Jays? Yeah, it sounds right. That was an unbelievable play. Yeah. Very good, strong, accurate throwing arm also. Very good uh, rookie campaign in 2013 with the Angels. This one's fouled back. The 293 that year. A couple of home runs. 39 runs batted in. He's in the tops as far as the AL Rookie of the Year that year, too. Finished fifth. Will Myers taking home the honors. The All-Star of San Diego. I remember JB's first home run down the right field line here. Got all of it down the line. Yes. Looked like it was 490. If you read the box score, this one's out to a left center. Nava is there. That ball tails back to him. Two outs. First out, number 12, Tim Anderson. We're talking to Hawk Harrelson about Tim Anderson, their prize prospect, another everyday shortstop. You said the baseball just jumps off his bat. 14 extra base hits already for the youngster. Struck out to start the ball game. He was hitting 304 at AAA when he got the call up. 11 stolen bases there. White Sox now with Carson Fulmer getting called up. Today, have four of their own first round picks on the 25 man roster. Anderson, who was drafted in the first round in 2013, Chris Sale in 2010, Carlos Rodon in 2014, and now Fulmer, first round pick out of Vanderbilt last year. They certainly have some talent, and they're right in the mix as far as the postseason right now, but one of those tough spots now for the front office. Do they add on? What do they, they try to do? I think if you're a White Sox fan, you want to see them adding on. They feel that they're that close, especially with their pitching staff. Seven back in the central. You mentioned the wild card earlier. Anderson fouls it off. Boy, Cleveland has continues to play well. They're winning again tonight in Minnesota, 5-2. to two. That's in the eighth inning. Down goes Anderson. A nice breaking ball down and in. Strikeout number six for Santiago. We'll head to the bottom of the third scoreless.
out to you by Ram Trucks on a 3-2 pitch. Base is loaded against Chris Sale, 13 inches off the ground for Trout. Base is loaded, and Sale comes Sale away. Home run by Mike Trout, a grand slam. And I'll never forget that reaction by Chris Sale, thinking I made the perfect pitch and out of the ballpark. I liked it when you sang the song when come you first sail saw away, it. Come sail away, come sail away, come and sail away with Chris Sale's changeup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates that. <laughs> well, because he thought he made a perfect pitch. Yes. His, re his reaction swing. was priceless. Yes. G-Man Choi leading things off. It's the bottom third of the order for the Halos here in the third with no score. And we're sticking with the 70s team with sticks and come sail away. That's right. Look at G-Man's picture on the scoreboard. We'll show it to you here, hopefully here in just a second. Joy, two for 24. <laughs> One double. <laughs> of course, he is uh, filling in for C.J. Crow. Fracturing his uh, left hand, getting hit by a pitch in Baltimore. About six to eight weeks, they say. That's upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Here's uh, G-Man Joy. He is the $6 million man. <laughs> With no neck. He's a bionic man. Well, he doesn't need a neck if you're bionic. <laughs> One, two. This was flipped out to center field. There's the first hit of the night for the Angels. And only the $6 million man will get a base hit on that pitch. Pretty good pitch. It was an off-speed pitch. Went down and got it. Hit it in the center field. Used the middle part of the field. Swing by G-Man Choi. Second base runner for the Angels they had a walk in the second. But then Gonzalez got Giovatello to ground into an inning ending double play. Here's Giovanni Soto. 266 average for Giovanni. Three home runs, seven RBIs. Carlos Perez sent back down. In order to make room for Soto coming off the disabled list. On the weekend in Baltimore. Jet Bandy the backup now. This is pulled right to third. Choi was off the bag, and the high throw pulls Abreu off, and Abreu comes down on Choi and maybe spiked his hand. See him getting back to the base, then the dive, and then land it right, the oh. heel, the cleat right into his hand, and that's all the body weight of Jose Abreu onto the hand of. G Man Choi. Adam Neva, Mike Sosha out there trying to see if he has feeling in that hand. All that weight on the heel, the cleat. Mike Sosha has been out there enough this year, yeah. running two players throughout this entire season, even in the spring training. Season. That tandem of Sosha and Nevola. Oh. Signed so far, he's able to stay in there, G Man Choi. Point right at the knuckles. Fortunately enough, he didn't see any. The cleat cut his hand at all. That's yeah. at least a good sign at that point. That's a big man that jumped up and landed on his hand. So Choi at first base with one out. Here's Hendrickson Simmons, shortstop, 12-game hitting streak, matching her career best she set earlier this year. Andrelton hitting 269, 12 doubles, a triple, a home run, 18 RBIs. Four forty-seven.
10 games in the month of July for Angleton. Joy takes off the hit and run is on this one flip foul. That's pretty much all you can do on a pitch like that. Just try to protect the runner. Fastball well off the outside part of the plate. Normally won't be swinging at that pitch, but you have to try to put in play or at least foul it off, and that's exactly what Simmons did. And so far in the early going, Miguel Gonzalez, as advertised, as what we have seen from Gonzalez against the Angels throughout his brief big league career. Now making his sixth career start, keeping guys off balance. Troy again takes off and broken bat roller towards second. Lars only plays the first. Two down. Man, it's going position now with two outs. And Escobar coming to the plate. Part of it because Simmons hits the ball so well the other way that Laurie was able to hold his ground and stay in that position to be able to field that slow roller that way. Escobar hit a fly ball to right field in the bottom of the first. He's over what? First opportunity for the Angels with a man in scoring position tonight. You see uh, Unel's numbers this year. Such situations. As you see in the age of the 275. He used the field, the entire field, so well. That's why those numbers are exactly where they are with runners in scoring position. No set way to get him out. This is a broken bat looper over the head of Anderson into left field. Coming in to score is G Man Choi, and it's 1 0 Angels. Just like that, using the whole field into left center field for an RBI single, 28 RBI. Split finger fastball that was out over the plate, middle part of the plate. Towards the end of the bat, but just enough over Anderson's head to bring home the first run of the game. 28th RBI for Escobar. Choi gets the uh, first hit of the night for the Angels. Gets his hand stepped on and eventually scores the first run of the night. Here's Calhoun. Struck out looking at the first. Only punch out for Gonzalez to go with one walk and two hits allowed. Almost got him to chase that off speed pitch. Frazier, the lone player on the left side of the infield. Anderson, the shortstop, playing almost straight up the middle. Two balls, no strikes. And how important that is for Mike Sosha to have guys in motion. G Man Choi's going on that ground ball by Simmons, gets in the scoring position, ends up scoring on the base hit. Now you know Escobar. Two zero pitch that is ripped down the right field line. Fair ball into the corner. Escobar heading toward third. Eaton bobbles it. Escobar is going to come into the score. Cole stops at second, and the Angels lead it two nothing. Picking up a 16 double. Break down that right field line. That barrel the bat out. Talked about the need to get that swing path consistent, and that was a perfect swing from Cole Calhoun. On the break of all little cutter down the line, and he tried to cut it off, unable to do so with a strong throwing arm, unable to get that baseball under control. And Escobar easily scores for first. It looked like there was going to be much of a hesitation sending him home anyhow. By Ron Renicky. There's Trout. Down it in. Little surprise with the ball being bobbled a couple of times by Eaton that Calhoun 
Didn't get to third base, but content to get to second. And assure the fact that Trout will get a at least a plate appearance. Who knows if he's going to get anything to hit? Mike grounded out his first time up. What a what? Back to back two out hits for the Angels here to score two runs. Boy, Trout is three for 17 in his career versus Gonzalez, but all three of those hits, home runs. Good foul right back off the mass. Looking for four of them, but that's what. Black by Navarro. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Cole standing at second base, 16th double, 48th RBI. 2 2. Pulled foul. You know, his first two plate appearances tonight, 11 pitches seen. That goes. With the norm with him as far as being in the top as far as pitches per plate appearance at 4.41 coming into the game tonight. Got him upstairs. That'll end the threat for the Angels, although they strike for two on three hits. We'll head to the fourth. Angels on top two, nothing. Angels taking on the White Sox tomorrow night. It's a 6 5 start. Tomorrow, enjoy a groovy post-game fireworks show presented by Wells Fargo. Visit angels.com slash promotions to get your tickets. Fireworks and a groovy fireworks to boot. For sure, man. Yeah. Adam Eaton, Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera for the White Sox here in the fourth inning. And the Angels up 2-0. Eaton with the lone hit. A double in the first inning. His 14th of the year. 500th of his career. He now three for seven in his career versus Hector. Not many good numbers in this lineup for the White Sox against Hector Santiago. Eaton being one of them though has hit the ball well, especially going the other way. Yeah. 
two and one. This is hit toward third and under the glove of Escobar. Simmons got it, but no play. First baseman, number 79. Is on board. We'll see how they rule it. And that's part with that good prep step to be in position. This feels that to the side. It's off his glove. One of those plays you would think he might have had a shot to get in front of it at that one, even though it's hit well off the left handed batter's bat there, going the other way by Eaton again. But usually a play you're going to see Escobar making the play on. In today's game, it's a hit. Here's Abreu. This one fouled and out of play. Abreu, strikeout victim of the first, one of six for Santiago. Ray has rolled into 13 double plays and Hector quickly looks back to who's going to have that coverage at second base in case the baseball's hit back at him. Oh, a nice pitch down at it. No balls, two strikes. Santiago with 10th strikeout performance against the White Sox back on April 18th. That remains his season high. He's hit nine a couple of times, including in his last start. That was at Tampa Bay. Good pitch in on the hands. He ran that fastball in very, very well. This one's hit out towards center field, towering shot. Trout moving back over. He's underneath it. Eaton racing back to the back at first. He's tagging. He'll stop, though, as Trout gets the baseball quickly back in. Simmons almost uh, throwing that away. One out. And what he was doing, he was anticipating Eaton having a tougher time getting back to the base. So he quickly would get it and fire to first. But Trout he got himself in very good throwing position, knowing that he may try to tag up on him. Got back on the baseball, goes forward, catching the right part of his body, the firm throw of the second. <laughs> That's a sinker. <laughs> he had a good smile on that one after he threw that ball directly right in the ground. It looked like a lot of first pitches we've seen now. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And not even from the mound. Melky Cabrera takes down it in. Got eight errors on the season. Simmons does. I think uh, a few of them have been because of trying to do a lot more yeah. based on the issues the Angels have had. And, and what you're seeing though sometimes, you're gonna have guys playing some first base with not a lot of experience either. There's the screw, the Simba crew. Yep. All They're making cue. their way in. Broken bat bouncer toward third. Fair ball. Escobar gets rid of it quickly for one. The relay back to first, and Choi can't come up with it. He may look at that play at second, too. Robin Ventura is pointing out right away to see if indeed Eaton did not beat the throw or if Chiavatella was on the base. Looks like right here. Baseball in the glove, on the base, and then out of the way of the slide. I think it would have been very interesting if Choi comes up with this baseball. That would have been bang, bang. See the throw, and then off the base. Again, that in the neighborhood play no longer is an automatic out at second. You have to have that foot in contact with the base as the baseball is going in your glove. Cabrera on board via the fielder's choice. Two outs now, and it's Todd Frazier at the plate. Struck out looking to lead off to second, so he's 0 for 1.
against that all speed pitch. It's a very dangerous pitch against Frazier and his power. You can see that swing he has. He was on that one. Also, a modified slide step, too. And Cabrera does not run at all anymore. And that's the quick conversation I think Soto's going out there to talk with. 63 pitches for Hector, 46 of them strikes. Again, there's times where you want to be quicker than the play with Cabrera at first base. That's not one of those times. You just go back to your normal follow through. Like that one right there. Frazier lifts one out to left field. Navo comes in and now we'll backpedal a couple. A couple more. That'll do it for the White Sox. They get a hit and leave a man off. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Pujols to lead things off with the Angels up 2 nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning, Halo's up by the score of two to nothing. Hector Santiago certainly uh, chatty as he always is uh, <laughs> on the field. Six strikeouts for him. He's allowed two hits both to he's, Adam Eaton. He's always looking for somebody to talk yeah, to. He's yeah. one of the few starting pitchers. That usually you sit there and you're zoning in on the game. He's out trying to find somebody to talk to. Yeah, more times than not, you'll see a starting pitcher just kind of sit down. And Matt yeah. Shoemaker, perfect example, head down. But yes. uh, I know that you're digging this, and no pun intended, groovy <laughs> 70s weekend. And there's no doubt about it. There's some fantastic looks, great music, great outfits, too. No truth to the rumor that you've put in for the uh, the hairband 80s weekend? Oh, oh that, that's, that's, uh, th there's Albert Pools, Billy Jack. Bad man. Ground ball towards short. That's Anderson. Albert retired for the first down. He's open two on the night. They had a stat on the board earlier today when they were showing some of these things. And Billy Jack grossed $98 million. Yeah. I mean, back in, what was it, 71? That's a lot of money when you. That's got to be worldwide. When you push it back to this day and age, that had to make, that would be equivalent to make $400 plus million. Didn't they make uh, made for TV movies in the 70s of Billy Jack as well? Yes. And then there was the other, uh, was it Walking Tall? The sheriff with the uh, the big stick that used to beat up casinos and stuff like that. Was that Walking Tall, Norm? Norm would that might have been Walking Tall. Walking yeah. tall. <laughs> <laughs> Nava drives one out to center field, but J.B. Shuck is there and puts it away. Two down. <laughs> Walk softly, carry big stick, they say. <laughs> Two outs, nobody on for Johnny Givatella. Oh, man. It is a groovy 70s weekend. There is no question. Yeah, The Rock redid Walking Tall. That was in 04, though.
Johnny late takes a strike. What saw uh, the Rock in Kevin Hart movie Central Intelligence yesterday. Did you like it? Yes. Told you you would. Yes. I immediately start to laugh every time I see Kevin Hart to be honest with you. Yeah he's funny dude. And seeing the Rock breaking it down. That was pretty solid. Yeah. Do a little dance. One ball one strike. Walking tall in 1973 film. Joe Don Baker. Yes. Was the star of that. Main character's name was Pusser. <laughs> I don't make these things up. That's look at IMDb. <laughs> Johnny fouls it off one and two. Two balls, two strikes on Gio Botello, grounded into a double plate in the second. I think you're kind of liking this 70s theme. Well, I mean, we definitely that's, that's, love the unis that yeah, the Angels I, are wearing well, right now. Well, I mean, that's kind of my, my wheelhouse, yes. you know? That's on the corner. Johnny goes down looking. That's a 1 2 3 inning for Gonzalez, second one of the night. And we will head to the fifth inning with the Angels up 2 nothing. is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Buy El Pollo Loco. Try the new Fire Grilled Chicken Burritos today and buy Infinity. Visit your local Southern California Infinity retailer for a test drive today. Halo's on top on the score of two to nothing. Both runs coming across in the third inning with two outs. Back to back hits. Escobar and Calhoun as the first pitch is cut on by Brett Laurie. Johnny Givatella calling for it. We'll take that one pitch, one out to start the fifth. That had some serious height to that pop up. Again, Brett Lowry generally very aggressive on the first pitch. Number, we have a number of hitters the in this lineup for the White Sox that are very aggressive. Garcia is another one who's on deck. It swings very early and counts. Lowry now over two. And here's Gianna Navarro who struck out down the second. Six strikeouts, no walks, two hits allowed for Santiago. No balls, two strikes. 
It's the seventh 0 2 count that Santiago's had tonight. And great pace for him, not walking around, wasted time in between pitches. This one's fouled off. Very good change up again by Hector. Good location. Navarro well out in front, just barely fouls that one out of play. Now you think he might have a chance to go up the ladder with a fastball. Popped up behind the plate, Giovanni Soto. Underneath it, puts it away, two down. Designated hitter, number 26. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Seven fly ball outs by Hector today to go along with his six punch outs. Garcia, the DH, lined one out to Calhoun his first time up. And again, you'll see Soto flashing that glove over beyond the back of Garcia, right-handed batter, to let Escobar know that he's going to throw inside. There's a chance that baseball could be hit his way. Oh, a two. Another 0 2 count for Hector. That's eight. One ball, two strikes until a warm night. See the hat. Although Navy, that, uh, that A is soaked. Breaking ball, looked like he went around. He sure did. Manny Gonzalez brings it up a 1 2 3 inning for Santiago. That is his seventh punch out of the night. But strikeouts and five innings of work, just two hits allowed. Both to Adam Eaton, a double in the first, a single in the fourth inning. Debatable single at that. But he's got himself a 2 nothing lead, coming off a 1-2-3 inning. As is Miguel Gonzalez. He finished off the Angels in order in the fourth inning. And here the fifth, he'll face 7-8-9, Choi, Soto, and Simmons. So looking for someone to talk to at that point. He's looking all around. Everyone moved away from him briefly. This is a sunflower inning. Yes. For Hector. Breaking ball just slips out of the hand of Gonzalez. Choi with a base hit. He was the first hit of the night for the Angels, leading off the third. Scored the first run on the Escobar single. Out toward left center field. This one moved J.B. Sheck to his right. 
One down. Halos with a total of three hits tonight. Escobar and Calhoun back-to-back -back two out hits played in the two runs for the Angels and Choi with the other hit. Face hit off the end of the bat. There's Giovanni Soto, 0 for 1. Lined down to the third base with Frazier. His first time up. Distance since starting out the game, the first seven batters face six first pitch strikes for Gonzalez. Since that point, just one first pitch strike in the next ten batters. Three balls, no strikes. Soto takes a strike. With the White Sox last year, played 78 games. The 219 for Chicago. Came up with the Cubs originally. Looks this one foul. Think about rookie of the year for the Chicago Cubs. 2008, 23 home runs, 86 RBIs, and 285 that year. Spent some time with the Rangers. Two and a half seasons, thereabouts. The White Sox, now the Angels. This one's fouled back. Pretty good swing at that 92 mile an hour fastball, middle part of the plate. He's hitting the ball very, very well before going on the disable list with the knee injury. 3 2, line to right center field. That'll get down for a base hit, maybe more. All the way to the wall. Soto will end up at second base with a one out double. Fourth of the season. Took the ball well, lined out his first in that. Now a line drive to right center field for Soto. Fourth double. Now a scoring position for Simba. Fastball upstairs, stayed back on that one well. Barrel the bat, lines in the right center field for a double. Andleton grounded out to Brett Laurie in the third inning, so he's 0 for 1. Simmons grounds one to short. Soto's trying to go to third. Easily got down. Two outs. Soto upset with himself for going on that one. Smart decision by the youngster at shortstop to go right to third base. Anderson making a perfect throw over the Frazier to get Soto at third. Quick release, good instincts there for the youngsters. I like how Frazier cuts the angle off, taking a couple of steps in front of the bag, forcing Soto down quicker. So Simmons reaching out of the fielder's choice, and here's Escobar, one for two. RBI is single in the third inning, his 28th RBI. Now Escobar at the plate. Oh yeah, it's like Freddie Boom Boom Washington right there. Welcome back, Cotton. 
with the stash. <laughs> You know, Shoemaker's beard earlier this year, he had that thing going. If he cut that down just to a mustache, that's what it would look yeah, like. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah. That should be the next trend, like the uh, big mustache. <laughs> Why not? We should have we should have taken the all-star break to try to grow one <laughs> yeah, that for this weekend. Well. Oh yeah. Who's to say we did? Oh yeah. Yeah. One two count on Escobar. Two runs for the Angels in the third. After Santiago, five scoreless so far. Fielders have been successful against Gonzalez. Five, six attempts. His one career pickoff. Gonzalez getting to start the first game after the All Star break because of Quintana. Jose Quintana making the All Star team. He gets pushed back past the weekend. Purcell also yeah. in the All Star game. He a home run to Chris Bryant. Baseball went a long way. It was a first pitch swinging against Chris Sale. Mm -hmm. James Shields going tomorrow night to be announced going on Sunday. Two balls, two strikes. Gonzalez with 71 pitches thrown so far. 44 strikes, two punch outs, and one walk. Pardon me, three punch outs, one walk. That split finger fastball hasn't really had a real good consistent feel for that pitch tonight, but still solid for the most part through five in the, for five innings so far. Matt Shoemaker tomorrow, Jared Weaver on Sunday. Number 605 tomorrow, 1235 on Sunday. Simmons will take off here on the pitch with a full count of two outs. And there's ball four. Well, as time was called. And that's what it looked like. Yeah, last second time was called. Escobar back down to Jim Reynolds. Reynolds, pardon me, granted it. A good rip at a fastball. Plate coverage that Escobar has. Fastballs away, all speed in. 308 batting average this season versus outside pitches, which is ninth best in baseball. Also very good on all speed at 312. That's a called strike three on the inside part of the play. It looked like it caught the inside corner, Gubik. Yeah, that had some good movement. That was a very good split finger fastball from Gonzalez to get the call third strike.
second half gets underway. Pittsburgh loses to the Washington National 5 1. Strasburg now 13 0. The team 16 0 in the last 21 starts. Detroit beats Kansas City 4 2. Houston all over. Seattle 6 0. Look at our game break from that game in Detroit. Victor Martinez at the plate gets jammed. This gets that ball. Looks like Soria on the mound, and second baseman playing well into that outfield grass. Ends up rolling in there for a two RBI single as Detroit wins the game four to two. Verlander picks up the W, a nine game winner for the Tigers. Jamie Chuck to lead things off. Nine one and two for Chicago here in the sixth inning. Chuck Anderson and Eaton. JB hit a fly ball to left field in the third, so he's 0 for 1. Check swing foul. How about Houston right now? That lead holds. They're only going to be four and a half games back. The Texas Rangers, who lost today in Chicago. Ground ball back up the middle to lead off single. So Shuck is on board. Third hit of the night for Chicago. And that'll sure bring us back to the top of the order, Tim Anderson. And going back to my Hyundai key to the game for Hector, knowing me, knowing you, he knows this lineup very well for the White Sox, a member of Chicago for a number of years. He's pitched very well against them. That pitch right there, though, against Shuck upstairs, but for the most part, has thrown the ball exceptionally well in this game into the sixth inning. The third hit Hector has allowed to go along with seven strikeouts. Soto quickly out to talk things over with Hector. Anderson over two with a couple of strikeouts. Seven punch outs for Hector. 77 pitches, very manageable as far as the pitch count is concerned. You're mentioning the Astros. Should they hang on and pick up a game? They also picked up a potential uh, third baseman down the stretch. They signed a 32 year old Cuban, Julieski Guriel, a five year deal today. Yeah, everybody I've talked to said this kid is legit and could be up there quickly with him. This one over to third. Escobar's got it. Over to Giovatella for one, and the relay in time for a double play. That baseball was hit hard. Great Ed Escobar and a quick turnover to John Giovatello for a 5 4 3. Double play. That's his eighth double play turn behind Hector Santiago this year, who said in spring training he was going to be in the, in the thought process of getting some quicker outs on the ground. Well, that was a big double play turn by Escobar and Giovatello. Base is clear, two down, and here's Adam Eaton. Two for two, a double and a single. Eaton came in batting 321 against left handed pitching. Trying to bunt his way on his own. Take that batting average up with the two hits already against Santiago. I think the reason why, because he's just looking to hit the ball the other way. And Left-handed pitchers generally against left-handed batters will throw breaking balls and fastballs away. This way to neutralize Eaton as far as if you're a left-handed pitcher, I think is pitch him inside. He lets the baseball travel deep in the strike zone and punches the ball very well the other way. See, that's his approach. Just looking to slap the ball to left to left field, left center. Especially if you elevate it. Now you can't do that as much when it's downstairs, lower part of the strike zone. Nine oh two counts for Santiago tonight. Trying to finish off the sixth inning. You're going to see that what Hector did touching his eye to make sure he's focused on where he wants to throw that pitch. This one's out toward right center field. Long run for Trout, and he will track it down. What a play by Mike Trout. And Adam Eaton 
about halfway between first and second, waves him off. He, well, we showed him earlier, he is Superman, gliding through the air to run down that shot right in front of the wall in right center field. Handles up by the score of two to nothing. Another terrific play by Mike Trout to finish off the top of the inning. He is on deck. As Cole Calhoun leads things off, and uh, we'll take a breaking ball for a strike. Cole one for two. He struck out looking at the first and an RBI double in the third. No balls, two strikes. Trout on deck, then pool holes. Upstairs. Gonzalez with four strikeouts, a walk, four hits allowed. Cole got out of the way of that one. I, I don't. Cole's probably wondering how he got out of the way of that one. Also, that was well off the inside corner. A four seam fastball right at his thigh. The old jackknife move. Yep. Off the high dive. I know you had that in your repertoire. <laughs> My back to school dive. <laughs> By Rodney Dangerfield died. Yeah. Breaking pitch. Cole goes down swinging. One away. Yeah, with Mike Trout coming to the plate. That play he made out in the outfield is our top tier play of the game brought to you by Arco. The distance that Trout was able to cover to run that one down. The running out, the full extension of the arm to be able to run that one down just as he steps on the warning track in front of the wall. Mike Trout and the reaction by Adam Eaton, like, yeah, get out of here. This, this go home. Really? You got to catch that one? I hit that one well? Trout's running, hey, dude, you already got two hits. <laughs> Eaton ended up just standing on the dirt, staring at him as he ran in. <laughs> no truth to the rumor, Trout yelled back, take notes, kid. <laughs> that was a nice play. They went off the bat because he was shading him toward left center the opposite way. 
I didn't think he had a chance to get there. Yeah, just the way that ball was going. Especially the majority of the baseballs that Eaton hits. We mentioned how many hits he has going the other way. 42 of them this year that he opposite field. One ball, two strikes. Mike 0 for two. He grounded out of the first, struck out on a high fastball to third. And you can see how he's playing. He's well over in the left center field and the speed and a quick first step. Able to run that one down for Trout in right center field. Got him on a breaking pitch. Three straight punch outs for Gonzalez now. That was a real good slow curveball. One we talk about timing for hitters coming back from the second half. Very difficult at seven, eight miles an hour for Trout to stay back, even though he's got great numbers when he's been behind in the count. That one, a difficult one to stay back on to hit the other way. Albert a fly ball to right and a ground ball to short. White Sox in the seventh will have three, four, and five to face Santiago, a brave Cabrera Frazier. Still a very manageable. Good pitch count for Santiago. Two and one now. Ground ball toward third. Frazier's got it. Halo's down in order here in the sixth. We head to the seventh. Angel still on top, two nothing. This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Subaru, making the world a better place. That's why they created Subaru Loves to Care, Subaru's commitment to a healthier community. Nice crowd on hand tonight to kick off the homestand, the first game after the All-Star break. Halo's leading it 2-0 as we start the seventh. Hector Santiago, 82 pitches, seven punch outs, no walks. Six innings so far, three hits, two by Eaton, one by J.B. Shuck. They have Brayu fouling off the first one. He's 0 for 2. First baseman struck out in the first inning at a fly ball to center field in the fourth. Big inning for Hector here with this part of the lineup with the power. And getting hit accounts pretty consistent, consistently throughout this game. One ball and strike.
One ball, two strikes. This one skied to right center. Calhoun calling for it. One down. Hey, join us this Tuesday. Angels taking on the Rangers at 7.05 and receive a virtual gift bag courtesy of Sports One Marketing. Each card is redeemable for coupons totaling up to $500. Visit angels.com to get your tickets today. We'll be calling the game from the uh, Shock Top Brewery out in the right field. That'll be a lot of fun. There's Malky Cabrera. White Sox have some action in their bullpen and see what they decided to do in the seventh. Gonzalez coming off a one, two, three, six. Melky. Skies went out the left center. Santiago again with the off speed pitch, got it working again. Another hitter out in front. There There's the brew pub. We'll be out there on uh, Tuesday night. A cool view for us. Yeah. Thank goodness for monitors. Yes, indeed. Do we get we get samplers out there, right? I, I hope throughout the whole game. Um, of the brew pub. Yes. Frazier takes a fastball inside. Over oh two. Punch down in the second. Fly ball to left in the fourth. Ground ball toward the hole and Simmons can't get it. Two out single for Frazier. All speed pitch middle part of the plate stay back on it well for a base hit. One thing about Frazier he enjoys the game. Always with a smile. A pretty good run in that home run derby down in San Diego at Petco Park. Tommy Canley Michael Enoa. Getting ready for the Sox. Berloy twice has popped up tonight. Once a short, once a second. Drosian now up in the bullpen for the Angels as well. And here's what's left in the tank. Presented by 76. You're talking about Cam Drosian. Last 18 games, 16 and two thirds innings pitches, zero earned runs. Ellis yes. Garrett, very good himself. You've given up only 14 earned runs. I mean, four earned runs, I should say. In his last 20 plus innings pitched. That's 92 pitches for Hector, 69 of them strikes. He's been very, very consistent. It's a three to one ratio as I far as strikes to balls tonight. I was just going to say, Gooby, that's got to be, if not his best, one of his best ratios of strikes to balls on the season. Yeah, I'm looking at all his numbers. The last, last game out, better for. Hector nearly 65% strikes. The game before, even though the numbers were good, this little over 53% strikes. Very solid tonight. Ground ball through the hole. Left that one up on an 0-2 count. So back-to-back -back hits here the second. And going to third is Frazier taking second is Brett Lauren.
Well, that's something that Mike Sosha definitely did not want to see. You don't want to allow two runners to get into scoring position at that point. This ground ball hit hard in between third and short. And then Nava not able to get that any quickly and overthrows the pickoff man, Simmons, and allows the aggressive Brett Laurie to get in the scoring position himself. So credit Brett Laurie for going to second on that on that high throw even from left field. Yeah, that's kind of a uh, nonchalant play by Daniel Nava, a mistake to even throw the ball to third with two outs. Yeah, you want to keep that one. I mean, you see that runner going over there aggressively. You just get the ball into second, so you still have that force out in case the baseball is hit in the hole. It's short. It's a 2 nothing game. You can't concede anything. Santiago worked from the full windup here with Dana Navarro at the plate. Now there's a second and third, two outs. And this one's popped up. Foul territory, Yunel Escobar calling for it. And it is seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A, and the Angels maintain their 2 0 lead. Very well for the White Sox also. Six innings pitches, two earned runs, six punch outs, one walk, 87 pitches thrown for the San Fernando Valley resident. 14th game, 13th start of the season. The Angels lead it 2-0. It'll be Nava, Giovatella, and Choi here in the seventh for the Halos. Any trouble for Gonzalez and uh, Robert Ventura has got a couple of guys ready to go in the bullpen. It's the first one's upstairs. Six strikeouts for Gonzalez with one walk. Daniel Nava drew a walk in the second. Got a fly ball to center in the fourth. Gonzalez a much better feel for his curveball as the game has progressed. High fastball, count remains at one and two. You notice when he's getting his sign, he moves his glove. The reason why he does that, because probably earlier on when he's doing that split finger fastball grip. Hitters noticed that that movement in the glove when he did that and it tipped the hitters at something off speed was coming So now he does it on all the pitches as far as moving his glove that way There's no difference between any of the pitches with the movement there The 
Pulled over toward first and under the glove of Abreu. Eaton over to cut it off, does so. Nava racing toward second, and it is a leadoff double. Looks like a pinch runner for Nava. Good swing right down the line, gets it by Abreu, a fastball. Nava stays back on it well. Got on it just underneath the glove of Abreu. Nava's fourth double. Some high fives as he gets into that dugout. Important leadoff double. Todd Cunningham takes over at second base as the pinch runner. Don Cooper out to talk things over. It's uh, Todd an opportunity to go talk things over with Ron Renick. Here's Johnny Givatellis coming up. I think this is also not only give the bullpen time to get ready, but also potential defensive strategy. Zach Duke, the lefty, Matt Albers, the right hander. thing I've seen over the years, especially when uh, Cooper goes out to the mound, there could be a pickoff put on early or step off just to see if Giovatello would square around the bunt. Showing bunt from the get-go and uh, a little hesitant on that breaking ball, and it's an 0 one count. Johnny tonight over to a double play ball and a strikeout. 3 sacrifices this year. Good take by Gia Vitella. He's all from that high fastball very difficult for a hitter to get that ball down on the grass in the infield. Trying to get him to pop it up. And wisely, Gia Patel does not try to attempt to bunt that pitch. Throw the outfield very shallow, obviously, the sacrifice situation. G Man Choi's on deck. Now the 1 1 upstairs. Two balls and a strike. Not a bad idea if you're a pitcher in that situation. See if you get a, an over anxious hitter to chase that high fastball. It's usually very difficult to get down on the ground. Yeah, you'll pop that up most times. Ground ball back toward the middle. Anderson will bobble it. Everyone's going to reach safely. Boy, it looked like Anderson had the intention of maybe trying to scoop that ball and go to third. And instead, nobody out. The Angels have runners at the corner. And on that play right there, Robin Ventura going to go to the bullpen. See, the instincts are there for him. And very aggressive. Would have been a difficult throw, too. Especially that angle, he's going to have to throw to third, but he was looking all the way to try to make that play on Cunningham running to third base. So Miguel Gonzalez, after the first two reach here in the seventh inning, will depart. Zach Duke coming on in relief. The Angels up 2 nothing.
have an error by the shortstop Tim Anderson. Six innings plus two. Five hits, six strikeouts, one walk responsible for both guys. And Jeffrey Marte will come in to face Zach Duke, who's taking over on the mound, or in and out, who's in, who's out. Duke on the season, 2 0, a 2.59 ERA. This will be his 46th ball game. 31 and a third innings, 27 hits, 37 strikeouts, Gooby. Yeah, he's got a pretty good fastball, not overpowering, good movement. It's around 87 to 91 range. He's slider, cut fastball, curveball, changeup. Nobody out here in the seventh. Jeffrey Marte takes upstairs, snap throw to third, and back easily is Cunningham. Jeffrey Marte, 219 on the season. Four doubles, five home runs, 13 runs batted in. He's one for seven as a pinch hitter, but one a home run. G Man Choi finishes the game going one for two. This is lined to the alley and left center field hit well. Nobody's going to get this one. One hops the fence. Cunningham will score. Giovatella heading the third. It's an RBI double for Jeffrey Marte. Makes it 3 0 Angels. Well, it's good to see Marte drive the ball to that part of the ballpark. What we've seen a lot of late from him is trying to pull everything. And something out over the plate. He's had a tough time with plate covers. But that, certainly with that swing, did not have any problem with that one. Picking up a double and an RBI. Now, two men in scoring position stayed back on that one very, very well. 88 mile an hour fastball just off the outside corner and drives that ball one hops the wall in left center field. So Mike Sosha's counter to Zach Duke works out in the Angels favor. Robin Ventura back out. Matt Albers coming out of relief. It's a three nothing Angels lead here in the seventh. Now entering the game. One run in for the Angels, 3 nothing. Jeffrey Marte with a pinch hit double. The Angels have runners in second and third. And it's Matt Albers taking over on the mound. 40th game for the right-hander, 2-4 and four marker, 5.06 ERA. His fastball is going to be 90-94 range slider. Curveball changeup, a lot of fastballs, though. Giovanni Soto takes down it in. Soto, one for two, he doubled to the alley at right center field in the fifth, his fourth double of the season. A ball would strike. Albers now 33 years of age, second season with the White Sox, which in 30 games last year. Originally coming up with the Houston Astros back in 06. One and two. White Sox, no runs, five hits in error. They've stranded four. The Angels, three runs, six hits. 
stranded two. Down it in. And quite a few fastballs from Albers. Over 70% of his pitches are fastballs. Soto trying to get a fastball elevated enough to get a deep enough fly ball to at the very least get one run home. Ground ball right side of base hit. Givatella will score. Marte is going to be stopped at third with the outfield playing very shallow. And it's 4 0 Angels and still nobody out. Boy, some really good swings in this game for the Angels as far as using the whole field. 92 mile an hour fastball down and away, and a good piece hit and let that ball travel deep in the zone and shoots that one by. Abreu in for an RBI single going the other way. For Soto, who's hit the ball very well, all three at bats. Double single and a line out is first at bat to Frazier at third. Simmons flares went out to right center field. That'll bring in another run. Marte was headed back to third. He'll cross the plate. And it's 5 0 Halos. Simmons extends that hitting streak down to 13 games with that base hit going the other way himself. Get up his 19th RBI. Another fastball from Albers. Upstairs. Most flares in the DL field will be elevated pitches, and that's exactly what it was. And Simmons able to capitalize for an RBI single. So top of the order now with Yunel Escobar at the plate. Three runs in so far and still nobody out. Escobar one for three had an RBI single in the third. Soto at second, Simmons at first. A nasty sinker down and in. One of two. You notice Escobar's trying to go inside out, but that's a very difficult pitch to do. But that type of sink inside on a right handed batter. Came right back in with another one. Mentioned earlier on numbers for Escobar this season on outside pitches, 308 batting average. That's why I've seen Albers trying to stay inside on him. Two balls, two strikes. Miguel Gonzalez, four runs, three earned. Six innings. The book closed on him. Duke gets charged with a run and one hit faced the one batter and that was Jeffrey Marte the pinch hitter. Back toward the middle and loved by Laurie nice play second a throw to first gets away. Everybody is safe as a matter of fact Simmons was called safe at second. Six nothing. Trying to flip that throw over there, not even close to the bases. He tries to throw the first to try to at least get one out. Able to make that throw also. A high throw. Couldn't get his foot on the base. Simmons safe at second. Another run scores on the wide throw. Tough inning all around for the White Sox defensively and on the mound. Robin Ventura making his way out now. Jennings is coming to the ball game. So another pitching change. It's still nobody out here in the seventh. Halo's on top six nothing.
Still nobody out. Angels have sent six men to the plate. Couple of errors committed by the White Sox. As a matter of fact, Escobar reaching on the fielder's choice in the second error of the inning by the shortstop Tim Anderson. Stan Jennings, the lefty, on now in relief of Matt Albers. This will be his 33rd game. 3 1 record of 1.64 ERA. He's here to face Cole Calhoun. Calhoun will bat with runners at first and third. Simmons, the base runner at third base. Escobar at first. Only some odd plays defensively by the White Sox, but real good swings throughout this inning so far. Four runs scored, still no outs. First and third for Cole Calhoun, who had that RBI double back in the third. Jennings last year, 53 games for the White Sox and having a good season this year. Infield play back at double play depth. Frazier just about even with the bag at third. Ball hits one towards short. Anderson has it to Laurie for one. The relay back to first in time, a double play. Two down as Simmons scores, and it's 7 0. Play Mike Trout coming to the plate now with his defensive play back in the sixth inning. Outstanding play. Eaton thinking he has extra bases, but Trout saying, no, you don't. Great speed, great first step, and the extension to make that play just as he got in front of the wall. And that reaction by Eaton. Ah, oh, just forget it. And the stare down. Really? Seriously, you have to make that play? Drought tonight 0 for 3 with a ground down, a couple of punch outs. Jennings fastball is going to settle in around 88 to 92 because he a lot of sliders and an occasional change up. One ball, one strike. With the Angels scoring. Four runs so far here in the seventh. Hector Santiago's night will come to an end. Seven innings, five hits, seven strikeouts, no walks. Third start in the month of July, and he's yet to allow a run. Yeah, that's three starts. It's outstanding. 20 innings pitched total for Hector. Zero earned runs, one run, but it was unearned against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Two balls, two strikes. Trout, the eighth man to bat here, the seventh. Hitting started with Nava pulling a double under the glove of Jose Abreu, the first baseman, down into the right field corner. Trout just got a piece of it. Full count. Another at bat with Trout seeing a lot of pitches once again. And coming in averaging 4.41 pitches per plate appearance. There's the 3 2. Trout works the walk. So Albert will bat. He'll be the ninth man to come up in this inning. An inning that has unraveled for Robin to the White Sox. Remember, they uh, had the tying run scoring position with two outs. Back-to-back -back two-out hits in the seventh against Santiago. And a little 
Lackadaisical play by Daniel Nava, put runners at second and third, but Deano Navarro swung at the first pitch, popped out at foul territory for the third out. Now the Angels have sent uh, nine men to the plate here in the seventh, helped out by a couple of defensive miscues. Has a real good pitch by Hector to avoid damage, picking up his teammates. Albert hitless tonight. One fly out, two ground outs. Takes low. Abreu playing behind Trout over at first base, and Mike gets a big lead. One on one. Jennings, 29 year old Iowa native, went to the University of Nebraska. Marlins, ninth round pick in 08. 2 1 count. Picture that they have of Albert up on the scoreboard now. Kind of makes him out to be a member of the Monkeys. Aren't they touring nowadays? They are. I think they're playing right next door at some point this summer. back what a fantastic show that was yeah did that start late 60s there it is look is that late 60s or was it a 70s show gotta believe it was a 70s show yeah hey hey with yes Two two. Now Albert strikes out on the fastball. The Angels score five. They lead it seven nothing heading to the eighth. On this open up 7 nothing against the White Sox as we head to the top of the eighth inning. And J.C. Ramirez coming in to hold this one down. Ken French with back outside the Big A. And coming up after this one, it's Angels Live presented by your SoCal Moz dealers. Join myself, Jose Moda, Tim Salmon, and, of course, Alex Curry. We'll bring you all the highlights and interviews. And also, we're going to break down Hector Santiago's performance here tonight. Coming off back-to-back -back wins. Another solid outing this evening. Seven shutout innings, big smile on the face, seven strikeouts. Now, career high for Case for Hector is 10. He's done that three times in his career. The last guy is coming this past April 18th against these Chicago White Sox. He likes pitching against his former club, fellas. He certainly does, Frenchy. We appreciate it as always. Uh, another fantastic guy we mentioned in the uh, month of July. You can uh, now rack up 20 innings of work. And 20 strikeouts to go with eight walks and three starts in the month of July, think, and not one earned run. I think it jumped out for me for Hector. No walks in this game. They very aggressive. JC Ramirez taking over right now. One and three mark. 
And you combine the numbers with the Reds and the Angels, his power fastball with good movement on there, 94 to 97 range is slider. He does have a split finger fastball, but settling more so on those two pitches, fastball, slider. Justin Morno, pinch hitting here for Avisael Garcia to start the eighth inning. Saw Cunningham at left, Marte stays in the game, he's at first. Morno activated off the disabled list today. First at bat is a Chicago White Sox. Grounds went over to second base, and there's out number one. Well, it's really good to see him playing once again. Former MVP of the American League. He's a member of the Minnesota Two Twins. Offseason surgery was rehab, and the White Sox with the uh, Adam LaRoche retirement looking to fill that void as a left handed guy off the bench. And it looks like he might be a platoon situation for Robin Vittori in that DH spot with Garcia. The first out recorded. Here's JB Shuck. JB one for two, a single in the sixth. Back toward Ramirez. Two down. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 support devices. Includes a free subscription to FAM Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Tim Anderson 0 for 3. Two strikeouts and a double play ball. Now it's up and in. <laughs> off the glove, off the shin guard. And to the morning track. Two balls and no strikes. You can see that movement he has. Either sinks it or cuts his fastball. You're talking 94 to 98 range with movement. 3 0 count. They got confirmation from David and Pete on Twitter about the monkeys. The late 60s. First aired on uh, September 12th, 66. And a four pitch walk after retiring the first two batters. Here in the eighth inning. So often we say that when you get those two quick outs and slow rolling ground balls off. The Mayors, all of a sudden you think you're through the inning, you lose that focus, and you 2 0 count before you know, and then eventually you'll walk here. So Adam Eaton will come up. Two for three, a double, a single, and a fly ball to center. Wasn't it MTV that bought the monkey show? Or they didn't they show it at some point? Regained popularity. Late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, they, they, they've played it quite a bit, and I've seen it a number of times. Actually, it's pretty funny when you look back on the way that was uh, where the music and the way they would run around all the time trying <laughs> to solve problems. That was a good show. Norm, our statistician and uh, resident Google, says the monkeys are going to be playing at the Pantages in September. September. So, I don't know how he knows that, but. Nice. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball toward first. Marte's got it. Well, that took a wicked hop. Jeffrey. BC to the bag. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Halo's on top, 7 nothing.
pitcher on for the uh, Chicago White Sox. Tommy Canley takes over. 26 year old right hander out of Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida, pitching his sixth game this year for the Sox. 0 and 1 record and a 6.23 ERA, five walks, a couple of strikeouts, picked up in a trade with the uh, minor league trade with the Colorado Rockies. And he's pitched in the big leagues before, 54 games two seasons ago for the Rocks, 36 games last year. Yeah, power fastball. He has anywhere between 94 and 99 slider changeup. Hanley at Triple A Charlotte, 23 games, a one on one mark, and an even three earned run average. This will be Todd Cunningham's first plate appearance. He pinched ran for Daniel Nava in the seventh. Cunningham, one for 14 this year. The one was a double. Change up to go along with that power fastball. Cunningham skies one for the shortstop Anderson. What away. Well, Todd Cunningham was at the plate. Uh, who knew that he goes way back with uh, Richard Nixon? Yeah. He's Elvis. It's a good look for him. Just keep playing that music yes. as the sitting plays on. Do you feel like playing bass? When that music's oh, going on. Bass. The awesome. high bass, too. Yes. Up by the chest. Yes. <laughs> Lifting up the right field. And moving the head is it that's it. Is a requirement too. Slapping the bass. First baseman. Johnny hitless on the night. He's out number two here in the eighth. Because Jeffrey Marte pinch hit RBI double in the seventh. Ninety-eight mile an hour fastball with some movement, just below the knees. Went around. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, the commitment there to swing early when you're trying to catch up to a 97, 98 mile an hour fastball. Ran that one in. And able to hold up on that check swing. Two balls, two strikes on Marte. White Sox in the ninth have Abreu, Cabrera, and Frazier coming up. 2 2. 
This is lined to short. And the Angels' eighth is in the books. We'll head to the ninth inning. Halo's trying to pick up game one of this three game set. Fernando Salas coming on a relief. Seven nothing Halos. Doesn't pull any punches. It's speak for yourself weekdays at three on FS1. Top of the ninth here at the Big A. Game one of after the All-Star break. Halos with a seven-nothing lead as Fernando Salas takes over on the mound here, trying to wrap up the first game after the break. Fernando now pitching in his 42nd game, three and six mark, a 5.05 ERA. Number 79, Jose Abreu. It'll be Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera, Todd Frazier do up for the White Sox. At least that's what's scheduled unless Robert Ventura decides to uh, change things up. Certainly so far a very solid game for the Angels. That first game back from the All-Star break. Some good swings. Took advantage of some mistakes by the White Sox. Solid pitching. Heck for Santiago. Excellent seven innings of shutout baseball. J.C. Ramirez very solid in his inning. Well, Fernando Salas trying to finish this one up. A little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. A Bray over three, a strike down, a couple of fly ball outs. Jack Swing did not go 3 0. That missed inside to lead off walk to start the ninth. So Cabrera will spin around and hit from the left side. 0 for 3 tonight. There's a strike to lead off the at bat.
down and in. That's the one pitch lately for Fernando. He hasn't had quite the control with his changeup. He's missed spots with that. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. Again, upstairs with that changeup elevated. Forty-two thousand thirty-one tonight on the Groovy Rally Monkey Night. Ground ball, right side. Salas has it. I'll take the out at first. One away. Abreu advancing to second. Good decision by Fernando. He thought about throwing to second, but you're just trying to get outs here at this point of the game. Don't want to give up any extra base runners by trying to force that throw to the second. Frazier cutting through the fastball. Givatella wanted to pick off attempt at second base. At this point, to focus on the batter for Fernando Salas. Frazier pops it up. Marte drifting out, calling for it. Two down. Second baseman, number 15, Brent Flory. Marte with that big pinch hit double back in the left center field. A big swing back in the seventh inning. Salas one out away from uh, finishing this one up and locking up Hector Santiago's seventh win of the season. Fred Laurie takes inside. Second baseman, one for three. He had a single in the seventh inning. It's been a struggle for Fernando of late. It's almost seemed like he hit a wall as far as getting up and getting a lot of appearances there for, for a period of time. Fred Laurie shoots one out to right field. Cole moving back on it. And he'll put it away like that baby up as the Angels take game one of this three game set by the final of seven to nothing. Yeah, like we mentioned earlier, a well played game all around. Cole Calhoun had an RBI double early in the game. Fernando Salas finishes up for Hector Santiago. Three straight wins for Hector, which ties a career high. He did it back in July of 2015. So solid pitching, some good defense, and some timely hitting, especially using the middle part of the field as Mike Sosa Club wins the first game coming back from the All Star break. Well round the game. Once again, Marte, an RBI double himself, so some big at bats. Simmons continues his hit streak at 13 games with his single in RBI, his last at bat also. As the Angels have through the month of July, actually from the end of uh, June to the first start of July offensively, Gooey, picking up the pieces, giving uh, they've been given some opportunities to score some runs. They've taken advantage of it. We saw that in the seventh inning. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is some really good approaches, just using the middle of the field. Your percentages of getting a hit when you use that middle part of the field greatly increase as compared to trying to pull the ball to left field or to right field. And you're seeing better results at the plate because of that. Well, Matt Shoemaker will take the ball tomorrow night, trying to make it two in a row. Jared Weaver on Sunday afternoon, but the Angels Take game one against the White Sox. Uh, they are now three and two on the season against the Sox tonight. The final seven, nothing. Alex Curry is down on the field, and it looks as if Giovanni Soto is going to be her walk-off interview. Let's go down to Alex. Alex. Thank you, Victor. Giovanni, a dominating win to start off the second half of the season. What did you see from your team tonight? I felt like uh, we were having a lot of fun. Hector up there was making some pitches. 
but uh, I felt like we had some fun, and that was uh, the theme of tonight's, tonight's game. And speaking of Hector having some pitches, it seemed like you guys were in a strong rhythm right out of the gates. Yeah, right away he was making pitches. His fastball was there. His, his off-speed was there. So, I mean, he, he was really good the whole night. So, nothing about to say. He was awesome tonight. And this is only your second game back after missing 48 games. You got a pair of hits, called a great game behind the plate. How did everything feel for you out there? Oh, well, t I felt great. I, I, I feel like uh, there's, there's a lot of baseball left in me, and I feel like, uh, you know, we can turn it around. And like I said, a dominating win for this team. Could this be the first step to turn things around for you guys? Yes, ma'am. Why not? I mean, that's, that's why we're working hard here to win games, and uh, that's what we're going to continue doing. That's what we like to hear. Congrats on the win. Thank you. The Angels take game one against the White Sox for a final of 7-0, to zero, a dominating performance by Hector Santiago. But stick around for Angels Live with Kent French, Jose Moda, and Tim Salmon next, right here on Fox Sports West.